Salutations. Welcome to Strategy and Analysis Centre. Today's briefing, China's Amphibious Combined Arms Battalion, Taiwan Invasion Spearhead. If there is to be an invasion of Taiwan, the first heavy units of the PLA to land will be the PLA Ground Forces Amphibious Combined Arms Battalions. Beginning around 2017, the PLA's ground force formations began a reform process, essentially converting divisions into heavy, medium, light and amphibious combined arms brigades. This briefing will examine the ground forces amphibious combined arms battalions, which represent the core manoeuvre elements of the amphibious combined arms brigade. Uh, if I can ask at some stage during the briefing to hit the like button, uh, it really helps the channel get to a wider audience. Starting with the command element of the battalion, there are likely two ZTD-05 and or ZBD-05s, one for the commander and one for either the 2OC or political instructor. The headquarters will also include armoured command vehicles and additional signals or communications support based on the ZBD-05 chassis. As with other combined arms battalions, the amphibious battalion has an organic reconnaissance element in the form of a reconnaissance troop or platoon with around six vehicles. These are likely split between ZBD-05 infantry fighting vehicles carrying dismountable reconnaissance troops and modified ZBD-05 reconnaissance vehicles. These are armed with a 12.7mm machine gun and equipped with ground surveillance radar, electro-optical sights and UAVs. The vehicle is able to launch a UAV while amphibious, providing an intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance update immediately prior to landing. The reconnaissance unit could well be part of the battalion headquarters and not a separate subunit. After the reconnaissance troops have identified the enemy positions, the battalion may employ its organic artillery. Unlike the heavy and medium combined arms battalions, this possibly comes in the form of gun howitzers and not mortars. The PLZ-07B, which has the same turret as the PLZ-07, is amphibious and able to provide either direct fire support beyond 1,000 metres or indirect fire up to 13 kilometres. While not designed to engage enemy tanks, the direct fire from these weapons can be very effective against dug-in positions and fortifications, while indirect fire is utilised for counter-battery missions and preparation of the battlefield. Traditionally, the PLA's artillery batteries have comprised six guns, but a recent trend has been to expand this to nine guns. An underappreciated capability within any formation are the support units, of which one element are the combat engineers. Within the combined arms battalion, the armoured vehicle component is supplied by modified ZBD-05s. Equipped with a flexible dozer blade, bucket and claw, its role is to build and remove defences and clear obstacles. An additional engineer capability that may be present at the battalion level are the assault breaching vehicles. These vehicles are equipped with mine ploughs, obstacle demolition rockets and rocket projected mine clearing line charges. The 8-tube obstacle demolition rocket launcher possibly uses the FHJ-62mm rockets that have a range of between 200 to 450 metres, while the rocket projected mine clearing line charges role is to destroy minefields far from the vehicle. It appears that the combined arms battalion has two armoured engineer vehicles and possibly two assault breaching vehicles organic to the battalion. Another crucial support capability are the recovery vehicles. Recovering disabled vehicles or removing them from blocking in advance might determine the outcome of an engagement. These vehicles are equipped with a crane, winch and A-frame towing attachment. It appears the battalion has two armoured recon recovery vehicles. Note the support element within the combined arms battalion provides both combat and service support and likely includes electrical and mechanical engineers, armoured transports and ambulances. One half of the battalion spearhead are the assault gun companies, each equipped with up to 14 ZTD-05s. Armed with a 105mm 
rifle gun capable of firing APFSDS rounds effectively out to 2,000 metres, high explosive rounds to 4,000 metres, and 105mm anti-tank laser guided missiles up to 5,000 metres, the ZTT-05 weighs around 28 tonnes. The Ground Force Amphibious Combined Arms Battalion is organised like a heavy combined arms battalion, with each battalion equipped with two armour companies, in this case assault gun companies. The other component of the battalion spearhead are the mechanised infantry companies, each equipped with up to 14 ZBD-05s. Armed with a 30mm gun, the range of 2,000 metres effective versus land targets and around 4,000 for air targets, and two HJ-73 anti-tank guided missiles with a range of up to 3,000 metres, they carry seven to eight dismountable infantry. Again, each combined arms battalion has two mechanised infantry companies. The amphibious combined arms battalion then has a total armed combat vehicle strength of around 30 assault guns, 34 infantry fighting vehicles and armed variants, and nine self-propelled guns augmented by a wide variety of vehicles providing combat and service support. In summary, the PLA Ground Forces Amphibious Combined Arms Battalion represents a lighter version of the Heavy Combined Arms Battalion, but is amphibious and well balanced with a comprehensive range of combat and support vehicles, all organic to the formation. The Combined Arms Battalion can of course be augmented by assets from the Amphibious Combined Arms Brigade, which will be the subject of a future briefing. Uh, that concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like, and share. Until next time, Vale de Serre.